Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Burke Crown. We're gonna be talking about the next batch of 99s. We had the HUD headliners, and with that, I'm like, you know what? They're gonna follow that path where they're gonna take the most built or most selected players out of those MSPs. Fair enough? When I said that, I picked the prototype. The prototype was gonna have Heshire, Quinn Hughes, and Point, Marner, or Devontae's. Um, the, the final three were like popularity or position based. Now I got one completely wrong, but I got two right. So we're gonna talk about what is going to be next and the next 99 overall cards and what event they're gonna pick and why. So let's get into it, I hope you do enjoy it. If you do, hit that like. Don't forget that sub and notification bell down below, guys. It really helps out the channel, it helps out the videos, and it makes sure you don't miss anything in the future. We are coming up to NHL 25 news soon, so if you don't wanna miss that, smash that down there. But let's get into it, I hope you do enjoy it, and who do you think is gonna be 99 out of this event? Okay, so I guess the first thing is, if you didn't know, Mitch Marner, Brady Kachuk, and Nico Heshire were the top three builds of, or most completed builds, of the prototype event when it came out. Now, this kind of leads us to the path of the next event, which we will go look at and talk about, and it leads us to the next thought process where the most built card is going to be the most popular. Mitch Marner was the most popular build card because one, he was a Leaf, a lot of people went after him, and two, he was taking... He was a part of taking advantage of the power of collectibles to build MSPs because his MSP was just as good as an 85 as an 86 without using that extra collectible. So that is something we have to keep in mind. Now, with that being said, prototypes were the exact same as HUT headliners where you used HUT headliners, headliners where you used pre-seasons to get the cards you wanted. I already have Mitch Marner, of course. He's 99 overall. I'm a Leaf fan. Why not do both? Get a 99 player on your team. I needed a right-handed player and a, a Leaf. I might also build Heshire or, given this video with who I'm going to say, I might hang on to my 297s for him. So we're going to have to wait and see, but the, this is the same build as Headliners, so we know whatever event we think is going to be the next one and why, that this will be the exact same way. So if you wanted to, you could get ready with 97 preseasons. And guys, I have a video coming out tomorrow talking about 97 preseasons and making them as cheap as possible. And uh, it's a doozy, so make sure you don't miss that. So with that being said, we went from headliners to prototype. So the next one, fantasy? No. I don't think the next one will be fantasy. Fantasy had MSPs you could build, yes. They worked their ways up to 99s, yes. But it was an event at its time to build, so I don't think we go that one. And then, Hot Rivals was just the Claude Giroux. That was it, so we're going to get by that. The Halloween one is just that. Now, next gen sets. Next gen sets had their own future sets, right? Where you, you built your next gen set and you picked which player you wanted based on the future of the Calder. So because that had its own tie-in, I don't think they would use this because the most built one was Connor Bedard because everyone was a lock on him being the Calder. So Connor Bedard would be the best, the best, the best build, but I don't think they use it because it already had a future event. That would be rough in my opinion, of them saying, you know, yes, we had the next gen, and yes, you had a future predictor set, but here's another, you know, this was the most built, so here's another 99 Bedard for you. I don't think they go that way. I think they go straight to Gallery of the Great. Gallery of the Great was a great set. It was a very good set that had a lot of good things in it. One, Sidney Crosby, Yarmer Yager, Coin Schofield, Al McKennis, Eddie Belfour, Alex Ovechkin, Patrick Waugh, Phil Esposito, Gonchar, which is an unbelievable card when it first came out, Megan Keller, and Bobby Orr. So, what am I thinking when it comes to all these? Well, Keller and Coin Schofield. They were both dominant cards with their speed, but unfortunately, I don't think they were one of the top, top three builds. Al McKennis had a unbelievable slap shot at his time and Gonchar was an unbelievable card at his time but I don't think they have it just because of some of the other names that were in this set. Esposito, Patrick Waugh, and Eddie Belfort I'm gonna leave out as well. Esposito was good but there's some dominant names as you already heard me say and some you've seen a lot of and that's gonna be a good way of deciding an indicator is what cards did you see an absolute lot of while you were playing at this time. And then Patrick Waugh and Eddie Bell for goalies. We never recommend putting that much time into goalies, building them out. So I don't know if these goalies would have been the most built, 
just because I, I don't recommend building goalies and small ones too. So that leaves us with Sidney Crosby, Yarmer Yager, Alex Ovechkin, and we cannot forget Bobby Orr. Now, I believe everybody built Bobby Orr because he was the reason the majority of people did this event, right? So now what we're going to say is, did everybody that did this event build Bobby Orr, right? Because that's where it's going to come down to. If everybody built Bobby Orr, then what we're going to be looking at is all of these MSPs got, got built at the same amount to build Bobby Orr. But then which ones got built extra? So I'm going to say Bobby Orr will be third on this list. Bobby Orr will be the third most built Gallery of the Great cards, and he will be a 99. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think anybody that did this event did this event to get Bobby Orr. Now we're looking at the cards that were built more than Bobby Orr. And that would be Yarmer Yager. I think Yarmer Yager was one of the most built cards in this set. And I think Yarmer Yager was used for part, probably the longest, even past Bobby Orr. But Yarmer was a good card. Everyone talked about him, so everyone built him. So even if you did this set, you went back and did Yarmer Yager. So you had Bobby Orr and Yarmer Yager. But I think Bobby Orr's third, Yarmer Yager's second. And then rounding it out will be Ovechkin. And the reason I say Ovechkin is because it was an Ovechkin with 90 speed and his shooting. It was an Ovechkin that was very usable and very good at the time. And people loved it. People loved having a right-hand shot Ovechkin with 90 speed, with terrific shooting. This card was dominant, just like the Yager. So I have Ovechkin being first built, Yager being second built, and Bobby Orr coming in at the third build. Now, with that being said, I can't wait to see a 99 overall Bobby Orr. He was a he was a great build, a great build with 94 speed at his time. It was a great build, and it was used, and he was used for a very, very long time, until for most people until another Bobby Orr came out, and then they replaced Bobby with him. But uh, yeah, Bobby Orr's got to be third. Yager can go first or second. You know, we can split hairs on that one. Um, but Yager and Ovechkin, in my opinion, would be the other two. Crosby being the one that just misses out, in my opinion. So out of this list, guys, who do you think? Who do you think will be the top three Gallery of the Greats coming to us on Friday? Thank you for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And I hope whoever you think is going to be a 99 Gallery of the Great card, you get who you want. But thank you, guys. I was right with the prototypes and i hope i'm right that they skip all those other events for the reasons i listed and we go right to gallery of the greats thank you guys till next time ciao ciao as you know mini player mini player packs mega player packs are juiced 87 percent chance of getting a, 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 a purple purple i was gonna say 90 but i think it's 86 a purple so let's see if we get a purple and then we will go over to our squad battle rewards, which are pretty good. And we got two purples. Two purples. Now, if, you know, one of these golds wants to be maybe an 85 McKinnon to sell while well, base champs is still underway. I'm not going to hate on that. You know what I mean? But what do we got here? We have 90 Alexander Holtz. I have pulled a ton of 90 Alexander Holtz, and he only goes for like 10K. Did you know that? Now you know. And what do we got? We got 86 Trevor Zegris. He, honestly, probably can't even sell for cheap enough.